So this is a question I ask myself all the time because every semester, well, at least 50% of students are going to fail that class. And it really bums me out because it's so unnecessary. Really, I've never met a student that was intellectually incapable of passing this class. But very quickly, um, if you do enough wrong things, your issues can become insurmountable. So I'm going to tell you the five reasons that I see students failing anatomy and physiology. And hopefully this little bit of perspective will help you get started off on the right foot. Number one reason is just not spending enough time. For every hour you are in class, you should plan to be spending two to three hours outside of class. So if you have three hours of lecture and three hours of lab, you should anticipate you will be spending at least 18 hours a week. If you can't spend at least 12 hours a week, um, I would say you won't even pass the class. The second reason I call right notion wrong motion, meaning you have the right idea, you're spending enough time, but that doesn't mean that time is necessarily well spent. You can waste 18 hours of time very easily. Um, most of the time what it is is that you need to improve certain academic skills like your ability to read a textbook, um, your awareness of how to sequence your studying so that's effective. So I do have a playlist entitled Study Tips. I highly suggest you check that out because everybody has academic skills that they could be better at. You need to really think about yourself. What are you not good at right now? Because you can improve at anything, but if you are not trying to improve, you won't just magically improve. You need to be constantly working to get better. So another thing I see is that students are not reading their textbook at all, or they're only using an ebook. So I'll talk about the ebook thing second, but in general, most professors will not explicitly tell you, hey, read your textbook. So what happens is students think that they don't need to read it, but your professor expects that you already know that you should be reading your textbook, like it is implied. So if you are not reading a textbook, it is kind of like you are learning about a TV show and you've only ever read synopses on IMDb or watched YouTube videos about someone else talking about the TV show and you've never seen a single minute of it. In the beginning, like season one, season two, you might kind of be able to fudge your way through. But what's happening is you're building all these gaps in your knowledge. Um, there's holes in your picture that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you don't even realize it. So what typically happens is students do poorly on their anatomy tests, and then they figure out how to study their anatomy, which is just the name of things, um, because that's pretty easy once you have a strategy. But then they start failing their physiology tests and the problem gets worse and worse and worse because they're not reading their book. They're on season eight of this show and have no idea what anybody is talking about anymore. And then the ebook thing, um, your anatomy book is essentially a picture book. So the problem with using an anatomy ebook is that oftentimes they're talking about something, you're reading about something, and the picture's on the opposite page. So, you know, even our book, we use an ebook, but you can get a print version of it for a reasonable price. And there's also another textbook that I like because I think it's written in a way that's student friendly that I will link in the description. But please note, you should still be using the textbook the school has assigned to you, especially later. The chapters might not line up anymore but I think using the textbook that I like just to get an overview, um, a lot of students have said they find that helpful. Another common issue is a lack of basic biology and chemistry knowledge. So like I said before, what happens is students start doing really well in their anatomy tests and failing their lecture slash physiology tests. The reason that happens 
is because the events of physiology occur at a cellular level and a molecular level. So if you don't have basic knowledge of the vocab for molecular and cellular processes, your life is going to be really difficult. None of it's going to make sense. So this is why at the beginning of every anatomy textbook, chapter two is chemistry and chapter three is biology. So my recommendation is those first couple weeks of class when your professor is reviewing those things, remember you're trying to learn the material. You're not just trying to get a good grade on the test. Oftentimes students get so focused on trying to figure out what your professor is going to ask instead of just looking in the book and reading the material and trying to learn as much as possible. If you do that, you will still get a good grade on your test, but it is possible to get you know, a decent grade on that test and still have failed the intended goal of getting the biology and chemistry review. So just get in the textbook, look over everything that's in there because the people that wrote the textbook specifically chose those topics because they know that they are foundational knowledge for other parts of the book. And number five is hubris. So if you don't know what hubris is, that means you never had a really great English teacher. Um, hubris is this concept of, you know, in literature, when someone has excessive pride, that excessive pride leads to their downfall. So with anatomy students, you know, we say all these things, we tell them all these things, but the problem is, is that so many students have gotten through school so far without ever really having to study because they're just smart enough that they can do well on tests without actually trying that hard to learn anything. Um, and unfortunately, every semester I see students after they failed their first exam because, you know, now that they failed, they realize what we were talking about, like what we were trying to tell them. And I don't judge anybody for that. Um, you know, sometimes people just have to make their own mistakes. They have to touch the fire to know that it's hot. But I would prefer you don't do that just because, like I said, it bums me out. I don't want to see students fail. And also the really early parts of this class are so important because they're the foundation for the rest of AMP1 and AMP2 and even going into your programs. So if you don't have a firm foundation in the beginning, it's not that you're doomed forever. It is just you are going to have to work harder to catch up. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. I hope maybe I gave you a little bit of perspective or something to think about. If you have any concerns and you go to the school I work at, you can walk in and come to see tutors at any time. And if you don't go to the school I work at and you just found this video randomly and you have any concerns, leave a comment. And if I can help you in any way, I will. Have a great day and have fun learning.